Diabetic macular retina is the, the second chapter uh, of retinal diseases that today can be efficiently treated uh, using this new uh, family of drugs, the anti-VGF uh, drugs. Diabetic macular edema, uh, you can go ahead, is uh, much more complicated that, than AMD. AMD is uh, maybe three, four, five different diseases, but they are a uh, relatively uh, small number of different things. Diabetic macular edema is much more complicated. So uh, you can have, and that's the reason for this slide, you can have diabetic macular edema for different reasons. Uh, you have the typical uh, retinovascular diabetic macular edema, vasogenic edema, which is due to a blood retina barrier breakdown. But you can have also all the others diabetic macular edema that you see mentioned here. Diabetic retinal pigment epiteliopathy, uh, some kind of tractional diabetic macular edema and uh, pseudophagic macular edema, diabetic papillopathy and so on. So you have a lot of different diseases that, are, that have a common uh, last end, which is diabetic macular edema, edema in the macula during diabetes for many different reasons. This makes the therapy of this complication of diabetes a little bit more complicated than what we do for uh, AMD. And what we consider important is to understand the reason for diabetic macular edema in that specific patient in order to know which is the best way to treat that patient. So this kind of uh, pathogenic classification is something that should be able to improve our capability to treat diabetic macular edema. Please. Uh, you know, Historically, laser treatment was the, the main uh, uh, important way uh, to treat diabetic macular edema. It was shown by a, a, an important multicentric trial, the early treatment diabetic retinopathy study, that whenever you have diabetic macular edema, if you do laser, you can reduce the percentage of visual loss in these diabetic patients. But uh, laser treatment, go ahead please, was only able to, uh, please go ahead, to produce some kind of uh, reduction in visual loss, but was not able to improve visual acuity. So uh, this, which is the diagram showing the result of the diabetic retinopathy clinical research trial, which uh, did a study on diabetic macular edema patients, uh, was something new, something important, using anti-VGF therapy and precisely um, uh, ranibizumab, it was possible to have a significant improvement in uh, visual acuity. If you compare this with laser, you have a significant difference. So this is one of the evidence that we have today that using uh, ranibizumab in this patient, Lucentis is ranibizumab, in these patients you can have a significant improvement in prognosis, uh, visual prognosis in these patients. Please. So, for sure, uh, the limit of uh, treatment using this kind of drug is that when you put your drug inside the eye, this drug is metabolized inside the eye. So, it is efficient for some time, but by metabolism of the drug, you are losing the effect of therapy with time. And this is a, an important discrepancy between the duration of the disease, which is all lifelong, like uh, the, 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 the problem when you kill someone, you go inside the prison, you stay there for all lifelong. And that's like diabetes, you have the disease for all your life. And this therapy, which is characterized by limited uh, uh, extension. And the problem when you start this therapy is that the patient is asking, okay, uh, I am now seeing better because you did this injection, but how many times I will do this injection? 
how many times I need to do the same kind of therapy in order to be able to, be, to, be, to, to see like I'm seeing now? And the answer is, we don't know, but now you need to do it again and again and again. So this is a problem for the patient. Th that's not the best solution for a chronic disease and acute therapy. Th there is a discrepancy between these two uh, rationale. But at the moment, that's the best. That's the best what th that we have. Uh, we thought that it could be useful to combine laser therapy with drug therapy inside the eye in order to make your effect, your therapeutic effect, longer, long-lasting. But unfortunately, all the evidences we have today are that combination of laser with drug is not able to improve the results and is not able to reduce significantly the number of injections, at least at the moment. So the number of injections in these uh, kind of patients is important to be considered because this is the burden of the treatment that for sure we must consider. Consider that the number of diabetic patients is much higher than the number of AMD patients. So we are speaking about a lot of patients, huge numbers. Please. And these are the results, uh, okay, for pseudophagic eyes, but this is some specific, it's no reason to go, go ahead. And these are other trials. Uh, this was done, they were done in the United States, Bride and Rice trial, uh, where uh, ranibizumab, again, was used in order to, to see if it was or not better than sham injection for a uh, patient with diabetic macroridema. So three different groups, Two treated with ranibizumab, different dosages, and the other one uh, was a sham injection treatment, which means the comparison was done with nothing. And go ahead. The results were that using uh, ranibizumab, uh, there was a significant improvement in visual function compared with, uh, with nothing. Go ahead. These are the, the results of, uh, of uh, this study. As you see, an improvement of 12 letters means more or less two uh, lines of visual acuity using one kind of chart, which is the ETDRS chart, which is the most used system for uh, measuring visual acuity. So um, after three months, the patients were evaluated for laser treatment. So they were afterward, they were treated with laser if it could be useful. Go ahead, please. 